Hey everyone, my name is Delana Burns and I'm with you today on Live with Prima. I have a really pretty book to share with you today. I created this album, this kind of vintagey, shabby album with the gorgeous new debutante collection. And uh, I've made it just from a very inexpensive hardbound book that I got from the dollar store. Uh, can be created with a new book or an old book. Uh, you can shabby up the new stuff. So uh, first off, I want to go over a few announcements. Uh, next show will be Thursday night. Um, Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, and that's Karen Tamir. Uh, Y'all be sure and join her. She'll be creating a really pretty set of uh, mini canvases. And uh, you're really going to love the show, so you'll like the canvases. Uh, next, I just want to be sure that everybody knows about all of our social media spots. Check us out if you're not already following us on Instagram. Uh, Instagram for Prima is Prima Marketing Inc. Uh, that's our just no spaces, just one word. Uh, next is our Facebook fan page. Be sure and check those out. Prima Marketing Flowers, uh, the live uh, with Prima Group, and also our Prima Art Venture Group. So you can kind of stay up to date on everything that's going on with Prima um, through Facebook and Instagram. Also our YouTube channel. Uh, Y'all know if you're here on Ustream that we do these shows live. Once the shows are complete, they're moved to YouTube as well. And there's also other videos from designers that are doing videos over on YouTube. And um, our channel there is Prima Marketing. So if you'll check out our social medias. And if you're not following us, we'd love to have you follow us. So y'all, please do that when you get a minute. Um, and I'm going to move right into showing you a few of the gorgeous debutante pieces. I know y'all probably by now seen it online. Um, but I'm going to pan you down. I don't think I'm going to be able to show you with the camera standing up. So I'm going to go ahead and pan you down and um, get started. So y'all bear with me just a second. Just take just a minute to get this situated. And my camera's going to move. So give me just a second. Sorry about that. I'm trying to be pretty close today so that you can sort of see the details that I'm working with. I don't know what I've done to my camera here. I guess I've loosened it. Let me let me give it a tight twist here. So, aha, there we go. I just about, just about brought it down. So you can see this is my project um, that we're gonna be working on. Give you a little bit of a close-up view of that. And then I will get started showing you the gorgeous debutante collection. And you can kind of see the inside pages here. Just shabbied them up and added lots of parts and pieces. And this is a book, so it's going to be a really, really, um, really cool book to create. So first let me show you the debutante collection. These are the papers, the 12 by 12 papers. And you can kind of see, I'm going to go through these really quickly. But you can kind of see how pretty and shabby these are, the gorgeous florals and... Um, kind of the mixed media backgrounds and the the uh, fans and the, the chairs and boots and purses and little hangers. It's just really pretty. The gorgeous floral papers. These are all just so pretty. Another really pretty floral. It's just a really, really nice um, shabby collection. Love the mauve pink and you get this sheet with all the frames. Kind of see the background is sort of got a trellis type background with the greenery and then the really pretty dress forms kind of uniquely made the arms are kind of separate it's just really really pretty and then this looks like a like an uh a drapery that sort of swags down um love the drapery effect really really pretty so those are the six papers next a few of the flowers I'll show you. So I'll go ahead and show you the Satan Crystal pieces. See how pretty those are, the little flower resin pieces. Gorgeous brads. We're going to be using a lot of this stuff during the show. So got the really pretty flowers. And I'll let you know the numbers as I'm using them. But I'm just going to give you just a quick peek. A lot of these I've used out of the packages. And of course there's gorgeous stamps that go along with this collection as well. I'm trying not to get the glare. I don't have it out of the packaging. So um, 
just giving you a quick glimpse of that. Also, we have the gorgeous chipboard. Lots and lots of pieces. You can see the, the dresses in there and some frames and, of course, the beautiful feathers that, that match the line perfectly. Uh, there's a few sequins in there. Just a gorgeous collection. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started with my book just so we will have plenty of time to cover this. Today I'm using kind of a gray and pink book. Originally, my book was a, a green with a little bit of a cream binding, but made just like this. I picked these books up brand new at my dollar store um, for I think $1.99 each. Um, and you can even get some for a dollar. If you've got old books that you want to uh, make this from that's that's even better you don't have to shabby it up as much if you're using the old books but um, you can see I've made this pretty shabby and Prima gives you lots of products to do that with so to start with the inside of the book you can see I have removed a lot of the paper I just went in this book was pretty thick so I went in and I'm just going to show you, I just kind of went in between. You can see here where I've torn pages. I went in and I just kind of separated it in a few areas and just literally tore the pages out. I'm keeping all the paper because you never know when you're going to need that, that old book script or some kind of a script to add to your um, scrapbook pages or your mixed media. So you just want to go in and tear lots of your pages out. And what you want to leave is just, I'm hoping this will catch it on camera. It's going to be a little, you see how there's spaces like between the pages there? I hope you're catching that. Like between each area, I've got a big chunk of the pages gone. So what I'm going to do with these pages that are left, I'm just going to kind of open the book, grab your staple gun. And we're going to create some actual pages for our book. So I'm just going to grab a chunk of, of the, the paper like this. And what I'm going to do is kind of cover up where I've torn. I'm just going to kind of put a page between to sort of cover that up. Because when you open the page, you don't see that. And then this chunk of uh, paper here, I'm just going to go kind of into the center with my staples and just staple those together, you can see. And I'm gonna go back and cover those up with some paper to hide that. But go back, grab another kind of chunk of the paper and hide your, hide your tearing. You can see I've got that tearing showing right there and I wanna hide that. You don't have to, I just, I kind of prefer to hide that a little. Go in, staple those. And these are gonna be the actual pages to your album. So again, we're gonna hide that and go in. And this is a really quick process. I'm using my little handy dandy Tim Holtz tiny attacher, but any staple gun will do. Just And this way you can create as many pages as you'd like. You can create as many or as few. I'm not really even counting here. I'm just kind of just going with the way I've torn it. Most mini albums have six to eight pages. Um, for you to decorate the back and the front. So um, I think I may end up with around 10. I'm not sure. Well, maybe not with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to actually get eight. So I'm doing really good. So there we have that. Now we have our pages for our actual book. So I don't want to get off camera. So you can kind of see the pages that we have. Next thing I want to do, since this is new, I wanted to distress this up. And I'm going to use this um, stencil that is called Stain. The number is 572181. First thing I'm going to grab is some pastel brown ink. And you can see this ink pad has been used quite a bit. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of lay it over the top of my book like so and just pounce. Just pounce it on. This pastel brown is just a really good kind of distressy color. So if the book's kind of been laying around, 
I'm going to add a little gray and um, maybe even a little pink too just to kind of bring those colors out. If, you're, if your um, stencil is shifting, don't worry about that. Just kind of shift it around and add your color. You can kind of see. Can you kind of tell? My lighting is terrible. But can you kind of tell? Let me get you close. Can you kind of tell how that's coming there? I may need to actually turn a light off or on. I'm not sure which. Okay, let's see if this helps. Daytime for me is so much light. I have so many windows in this in this room, but I'm going to have to get my focus back. So let me grab something that I can get my focus back with. Grab a pack of flowers and get this focus back. Sorry, I totally messed this up for this. Come back, focus. Come back, focus. Okay, I think we got it. I'm just going to kind of keep this in the area here of what we're doing so we'll keep some focus on this and just move on to stressing this I've got a little empty spot here so I'm just going to lay my stencil back down and just pounce with my ink you don't want to use a real juicy ink when you're doing this you kind of want to use one of your older pads um, if you can or pounce it with a like a stencil brush you can actually use a stencil brush like this once you have the uh, ink pressed onto your stencil. You can just kind of move your stencil brush around and that will move some of the ink onto the actual book. And I've got a little bit of the gray already on here from the projects I've done before. So you can kind of see, you're just able to move that around. I am going to grab some gray and go in and I'm going to add the gray color this is um, 10 cup I believe this is called so you're just going to kind of add it to your stencil and just pounce it down on top of your stencil and then with your stencil brush and this is just kind of a round a little bit more stiff brush move that color all around into your stencil and since this isn't having to be real precise you just kind of want this distressy color kind of all around it um, doesn't really matter. So we're going to open this out so we can get the back side as well. Again, I'm going to pounce some gray. I'm just going to do these kind of at the same time. Get your pastel brown down. And just continue to distress. You can use your distressing tool and sort of tear the edges up if you'd like. I, I kind of didn't want that for my project. I wanted, I wanted the edges kind of, in, kind of intact, but it would be a really good idea if you wanted to just sort of use your distress tool and wear the edges just a little bit of your book. You can wear the edges of your pages or just whatever you'd, whatever you'd like to do as distress did you like it. And so you can kind of see I'm getting that color kind of all over. I'm just going to move my stencil around and just continue to move that color that I already have on the stencil onto the book. I love this pattern of this stain because it, it's just very random and so you don't really have to be so careful as to where you're placing your uh, stencil. It's going to get it. Make sure you're getting your spine and I'm adding a little more of the gray color. I'm just pouncing a little more of the gray actually onto the book, onto the spine. And I'm going to go on with my, with my brush and just move a little bit of that around. We're going to add some lace. And we're also going to add some modeling paste. So uh, we're going to tone this down just a little bit when we add that. Just kind of hold your book up. Be sure to pounce your edges. You can just kind of look around your book and see if you've missed places or whatever. Next thing I did, and I'm not going to do every single page just for time purposes, uh, or for time's sakes rather, I went into my actual book and I pounced all through the book with the um, 
pastel brown. Just distressing the inside of this just a little. You can do it as little or as much as you like. A lot of this is going to be covered with papers and different things that you're adding. So just kind of want to concentrate on your outside areas. Kind of take your ink pad and brush the edges of your pages. Get those pretty good. And I like the pastel brown because it just gives it the effect of maybe it's been sitting up in the dust or um, just do all of your pages. You can kind of see I'm just pouncing away at my pages. You can grab them all up at one time and that's this pad starting to shed because I've used it so vigorously probably on this project. Be sure and get the edges of your book. I'm going to make sure that I distress the edges by using this color all over. All over with the pastel brown first. And I'll show you really quick what I mean by the using the distressing tool. You can go to the edge of your book with your distress tool and you can just kind of wear the edges if you'd like. That'll help to wear that little, make it look a little older um, if that's the look you want to go for. Even the edge of the sign can be distressed just a little. You can use the back side to kind of distress the back and the cover just a little more. Go in with your pages and do the same thing. You can distress those up. So it's totally up to you as distressed as you would like for your book to look. Um, make it as old as you would like. So what I'm going to do is just do a few more inside pages here. I'm going to take some of the gray as well and I'm just going to pounce the stencil and then I'm going to move the color in because I don't want such a dark gray color in there. I'm just going to move the color more with my brush and you can see I'm doing that by actually pouncing the stencil itself and then just moving that color and it moves right inside those stenciled open whole areas there on the stencil so and you always have a little color left on your brush and that'll that'll kind of move to the outside and you can see how that just just kind of distresses that right up add a little more of your brown and it's the pastel brown that I'm using and then you can also go in with your brush for any that you've gotten on your stencil um, and move it into your pages and you want to do this on every on every page you just want to be sure to do that on every page through your book before you start actually decorating the pages um, which I'll show you in just a minute how we're going to get started on that okay so now what I'm going to do with my book I'm going to grab my flowers to get my oh my gosh I keep losing my focus this is not a great project to keep focus it's going to be better in a minute when we start adding some papers Next, I need to stencil with some modeling paste. Let's see if that'll grab that. I need to stencil with some modeling paste, but I want to get my focus back first. Okay, let's see if it keeps it. Not sure why it's not keeping the focus. Okay, I'm going to move on. It should grab it in a minute. So I'm going to move on and I'm going to add some modeling paste. And I've got a couple of stencils here. And Carrie, I don't have the numbers to these two. I did add one of the numbers. Okay, hold on. Getting a text. Let me see. Yes, I can hold that up for sure. Let's hold that up. Can you kind of see? I'm not sure why we're losing our focus here. This is this is not working. Okay, we got our focus. So can you kind of see the cover? The light is... You see the cover where it's just got... The distressing you see the gray ink and you see the brown the pastel brown it's just kind of all over 
on the back as well on the spine I've just kind of got the color all over and then when you open to the inside same thing just distressed with the stain stencil on the pages as well and then we've done the edges okay so the next step I'm going to do is take we're going to take this stencil and this is like stonework there's a few of these that Prima released um, and any one will do any one with the stonework or if you like the brickwork um, any of that will do I don't have the numbers I've separated them from their packaging and I do not have the numbers um, out here with me but what I want to do is grab some modeling paste and I first want to kind of move it to the edge and I'm just going to add some modeling paste kind of all around you don't have to totally cover the stencil you just want you just want to have some of this on here we're going to have a lot going on kind of down the center so you don't have to concentrate so much on your center area So you can kind of see what we got going on there. And I'm going to move the stencil around on this side. I'm doing this kind of in a thin layer so it will dry quickly for me. Doesn't matter in which direction you use these stencils. Uh, as far as this book goes, this is again just to kind of help with the distressy sort of feel. I'm going to grab my dryer and dry this up. I'm going to remove some of these places here with my finger. Close some of our ink up out of our way. I'm going to let this dry for just a second. And this will dry really quick. Just going to hold the dryer on it just for a minute. Kind of wipe the edges just a little where it sort of went off the edge. Okay, it looks like we got our focus back anyway. Maybe this is helping with the focus. But you can see the, the color that we put earlier under there. Um, it's going to kind of show through. This modeling paste is going to dry a little opaque. So that color is going to show through. Okay, that's pretty dry there. So we're just going to open the book out do this to the back just just like so to the back I love that Prima has everything even even um, to distress and give things that old world look Prima is the best at making products that we can use and make things pretty. So I want to get just a little bit on the edge here where I missed. Go in and get just a little bit right there. Not going to worry so much about the spine because I am going to cover the spine. You can go in and do your spine if you'd like. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it today because that is going to be covered uh, with I'm having to figure out what to do with my stencil since it's so covered um, that's going to be covered with some lace so I'm just going to go ahead and dry this up if I can get all my tools out of my hands move our modeling paste out of the way and dry up our back you want to take your finger and kind of wipe it on the edge if you got a little over on the edge or a little excess and while it's still wet you can wipe any of it away but uh, I think I'm good and I wish I could read the chat while I'm working to see if you have any questions Carrie if there are any questions if you'll let me know or y'all can always contact me um, on my blog or on Facebook 
on my blog there is a link to my email so you can always contact me if you do have questions I'm always happy to help what I want to do with this this actual album is I'm going to totally finish the front and the, the back portion and then the inside pages I'm going to do a couple for you and then I'm just going to put pictures on my blog of the others because it's just a very time-consuming project to do every page and I know y'all don't want to stay here with me all day. Well, you might want to stay here with me all day. Um, I don't know. I don't want to stay here with me all day. <laughs> I guess I should say that. I'd rather get this, get this, hit the high points, I think, and then um, show you pictures of the rest. And it should be completely understandable. So I think that's pretty dry. I think that's all pretty dry so you can kind of see our book can you get a view of it like that don't let me lose my dryer see it just looks pretty messy it just looks pretty messy so I'm trying to just kind of show you you don't have to have it exactly like I have mine you don't have to have the exact same color um, book that I found but uh, I like these multicolored spine and uh, sides here it just it made for a really pretty project but I can I can almost see using a solid book and maybe wrapping a piece of the paper around uh, to add some color you can do lots of things uh, with such pretty papers to work with so um, this pink just really appealed to me and the green that I used originally for the actual um, debutante collection because of the really pretty grays and greens and pinks in that collection now I'm just going to kind of take my uh, pastel brown and I'm just going to just kind of hit some high spots here I'm not going to totally cover that um, opaque modeling paste but just in a few spots just so it's not so noticeable just to kind of give it a more layered um, depth type effect I'm going to just kind of run my run my colors and I'm telling you I have used this ink pad until and I, I basically distressed with it I guess I've shredded it um, now I'm gonna go in with the gray and I'm just gonna kind of be sure I got a little bit of the gray on the spine and I'm gonna move the gray in and this is again called tin cup and it's just going to again add to those depths of colors and give it a more authentic distressy look and you want to go in too with your pages I know we did the pastel brown go in with a little bit of the gray and it's going to help once you've done all of your stenciling with your stain um, so that you have that nice and distressed in there okay now we're going to do our cover work let's work on getting our cover done a lot of this I've cut for you ahead so we can kind of save time I've used um, the actual A4 pad to do this book. I love the A4 pad for projects like this. Um, for this book, I've chosen this really pretty, it's again, it kind of looks like a drapery fabric. Um, I've chosen that paper in the back is this really pretty, um, kind of got the, the ladies on it. I don't know if you can see it on there, but it's sort of got the images of the ladies on there. So I've used that, and then I've used this solid pink, and it's got kind of a floral on the back. But you can just go through your A4 pad. It has got, I believe, four sheets, three or four sheets of each 12 by 12 paper. Uh, but it's the A4 pad. It's uh, about eight and a half by 11 and three quarters is the size of this. So what I've done, there, there went my mouse. I'll grab it in a minute. I can't read the chat, so I don't need it. So what I've done is just cut a strip as long as my book, I cut it the length of my book, which is about nine and a quarter inches. And I made this one about two and a half inches wide. And then I went in with one of my punches and I just used one of my old punches. This is a Fisker's punch. And I punched out the um, edge. Same thing with this top paper that I'm gonna use. This is cut at about an inch and three quarters and I did it the length of my book and what I'm going to do now is grab my distress tool and just really quick I'm going to run it down the edge just to kind of show some of that 
white. I want that white to kind of pull through on that paper for just a second. You can kind of see. And I'm using this side of the distress tool. You don't, don't put a lot of force in it. Just kind of scrape it a little so you don't tear it so much. But if you want it torn and you want a little more distress, go for it. I like it just a little. I kind of like, I kind of, I want to clean things back up if I get them too distressed and I would have to change, I would have to recut paper. So I'm just going to kind of lightly touch this. Then I'm going to go in with my dark gray. I'm going to use uh, Old Road and I'm just going to pounce the edges just a little. I'm not going to rub a lot. This is kind of a juicy pad. I, this must be new because it's, um, getting a pretty good bit off so I'm just going to kind of barely touch it just you want to touch those high points on your edges with that color and I wanted that a little bit darker just for a little more contrast and I'm going to go back in with my pink and I'm going to see if I can grab a newer a newer pastel brown this is a little bit newer pad and I want to go a little bit more on my pink I want to dull this pink down quite a bit so I'm just going to kind of rub and you can do this if you if you've got a book and it's a little bit darker this pink needs to be it's a little bit brighter than I'd like it so this pastel brown is going to do the trick to just kind of dull that down for me just a little bit another great thing about the inks um, and these are actual chalk edgers uh, so you can always um, to make this a more permanent ink and it'll dry pretty permanent it's not going to necessarily come off on your hands but if you're afraid of that you can always set it with a fixative uh, or a, a hairspray just spray it and um, set it but fixatives will also just just give it a good spray and it's not going to come off on your hands I don't think it really doesn't bother me a lot I don't think it comes off a lot anyway but anyway if that's a concern by all means you can set it what we're going to do is go in and just start building our, let's move some of this, we're going to start building our center here. Lay this down. And what I'm going to do is just right down the middle of this. I don't want to get into the outside because I'm going to be adding some lace under there. Just going to do a bead of glue right down the center. And I'm just kind of going to eyeball this as to where I want it, sort of at the edge of this color, maybe an inch and a half from the edge of the spine. I want to kind of place that there with just glue right down the center. Same for this one. I want some glue just right down the center. And I do this whether I'm going to add anything on purpose or not because I never know when I want to go back and maybe add something like that. And I want to move it over just a little bit. I want to keep that kind of kind of balanced. I, I think I'm asymmetrical in my in my brain because I kind of want to do everything kind of to the right or to the left. And I'm going to tell you, it's about about an inch from the edge of the spine is where I'm actually placing this. Have those there, and then what I'm going to grab is my actual. Let me locate everything. I'm going to grab my actual laces. I used this lace and I used some of Frank's beautiful rose trim. And what I've done is sprayed it with some tea stain. You can see it comes on the, on the roll here, very white. It's 990459 and it's white on the spool. But what I've done is actually sprayed it with the tea stain to give it that sort of vintagey look. Um, and I've gone just to my just to my local Hobby Lobby and I picked up some more laces and trims that I want to use and I'm trying to locate my lace for the sides here. I just got this kind of wide lace. Hobby Lobby had their lace uh, half price. So I grabbed this really wide, and it's kind of already a creamy color, so I'm not going to worry about um, coloring it with the tea stain. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and cut it off pretty even with the length of my book. 
And because this is so wide, I want this scalloped edge. I'm going to split this right down the middle because I want a little bit peeking out from both sides of what I've added. So this is just a really good way to stretch your uh, dollar for your actual laces. So what I'm going to do is just kind of move all this out of my way. I'm going to lift up my edge and I want to kind of turn these corners up anyway. So just kind of raise these up just a little bit. I do that on both sides. Since we've added our glue right down the center, where these are these are open, so we can do that. So, just to add to our texture and our thickness, just kind of raise that up. Then what I'm going to do is go inside here with my glue and just add a line of glue right down, right down the inside there. And then I'm going to make sure I get it on the right side. I'm going to add my lace just inside, and I'm going to use my little nonstick scissors here so they're not sticking to the glue. And if you're a little bit too long, just kind of push it up, and that gives you a little bit of a gather in there. Just kind of push it together with your glue. Your glue will kind of hold it after a few minutes. So just kind of push this, push this up in there. It kind of gives you the effect of a gathered lace a little there. So can you see? Can you see what I've done? And then you've got your lace on that side. What I'm going to do is turn my book around so I can work from this side. I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to run my glue right down through there again. Grab my other piece. And I'm going to just feed it in with my scissors. Now, I like to use these little scissors because they're non-stick. They're not going to stick. The glue's not going to stick to them and they're not going to stick to the glue and they just help you kind of maneuver when you're dealing with the glue. So just sort of get that in there. There it is. So can, can you can you kind of see now what I've got? Lacy and vintagey and so pretty. It's just so pretty all put together. And you can just kind of keep sliding that in. And if you have too much, if it's kind of sticking down at the end and it's kind of bothering you, you can just kind of trim that off when you're done. Next thing I'm going to do is on this particular trim, it's got this little netting. Sometimes I cut that netting away and sometimes I want to keep it. Today I want to keep it. So what I'm going to do is just right down the center, I'm going to add a bead of glue, just like that. And these little rose trim pieces are going to cover that glue. So that can go right there. And by leaving that little netting there, it's kind of softening that, um, it's really softening that pattern back there and that pink color so you just get a really soft kind of vintagey look and you can see by using that brown and with the modeling paste and all this is starting to look pretty aged and, and very vintagey so that is my total goal was to get that vintage next thing I'm gonna do because of there's writing on the spine you can see whatever the name of the book was I'm gonna take a piece of this flat lace my spine measures a little less than an inch so this is about three quarters of an inch wide as far as the lace goes it also has a little scalloped edge i picked this up at my hobby lobby store i'm sure michael's will have it um, walmart has a lot of these trims so what i'm going to do is just add some glue and then with my finger i'm just going to kind of spread it out so that we don't have any little globs of glue kind of showing through our lace. I'm going to actually add it. I'm going to make it a little bit longer on each end than it needs to be because I'm going to turn that under. Grab some scissors and just cut that off. So I kind of eyeballed it versus trying to measure it and get it on there. 
So what I'm going to do is just on the end here, I'm just going to turn that under. Just because I kind of want a finished edge on my lace. Turn that under there. And then on this end, same thing. I'm just going to kind of turn it under. And you can go back and add just a little bit more glue if you need to. But you can kind of see that that's kind of the look I'm going for there. So now we've got lace kind of on our edge and also on the front of our book here too. And then I'll go back if I need to. Once that glue dries, I'll go back if I need to and add some more, some more color. Or I can add another layer of lace if you want lace all the way to the edge, just however you want it. The back I'm just going to kind of leave like it is. Um, I've distressed the pink color and I've got the the actual um, binding color and I'll show in there. So I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to kind of build everything around this little frame here. And this frame comes from number 572365. I've already sprayed it with some tea stain and uh, dried it really well. Just a couple of coats of tea stain and you can see, well maybe you can't see, but um, they come very white and the tea stain just gives it a little little darker, more distressed kind of color. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand my album up so I can kind of remember what I used and where I went with it. What I want to do first is grab my grab my A4 pad and remove the paper that has the actual frames with the ladies on there and I'm just going to I'm going to choose a different one than what I used originally um, just one that I can get I want the whole thing fit in fit in and maybe I am going to use the one I used originally because I think she actually fits the best inside this round frame so what I'm going to do is just lay that there and then just cut around cut around her eyeballing this again so that most of it is concealed behind the frame just like so a little bit of that corner off and then I'm going to add the glue to the actual frame now you could use a photo you could use a personal photo um, I actually had thought of using a photo of my mom um, or my grandmother when they were younger that would be really pretty to have a vintage photo. It would be really personalized if you did that. So it would look really nice on the cover. Um, but for the class, we'll just, we'll just use the, um, the debutante images. I'm going to grab a little piece of cardboard. Y'all know i got to have cardboard. I need my Tim Holtz scissors to do that. They make it a lot easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of cut my corners off so I can hide this behind this round frame. Just be sure it's not going to peek out. Add some glue. About so. And then what I want to do is add a feather. Y'all know these beautiful feathers come in the chipboard. So what I want to do is open this just a little and grab these two yellow feathers. So what I'm going to do is just take this longer one, just kind of pull them apart. Just muss it up a little bit. And you may have to kind of bend it a little bit. Um, you can even crack it if you need to um, so that you can bend it so that it will glue flat to your actual book. I'm going to add a little glue just to the center of the feather. Make sure you get some down here on the bottom so that he, he holds down well. And I'm just going to kind of lay this right across the book, kind of like so. I don't want to cover up all of my pretty trim. We want as much of that trim to show as well. And then I kind of want to make this one kind of go in this direction but I want to use this side so I'm just going to kind of bend it and I know naturally I should leave it alone and let it 
let it be like it is naturally, but I like to manipulate them. I want them to go the way I want them to go. I, I'm not satisfied with how nature creates. I want it to go. I'm a little bossy that way, I guess. So what I'm going to do is just add this feather in right beside this one, kind of on top. I've got the bigger one on the bottom, and then layer the small one right on top. It'll take a second for that to adhere, but it, it will. And you're going to add a few more things to the top of it, so um, it will be adhered down well by the time you're done. And you are still going to see some of your trim. It will. You can kind of separate your feathers so that it will show, and it'll show here at the bottom. So you're not totally covering up that trim. Next thing I want to do is add my actual picture here. And I should have paid attention to the direction of my bow because there is a bow at the top of this and I want my I want my picture in there straight because I want my bow kind of at the top of the okay then we're going to add that just about not quite in the center of the book sort of sort of up a little it actually is going to be positioned about two and a half inches down so if you've got a, and I want to push my feathers really close together. I want these little, these little um, legs down here to be pretty close together. So we'll add that right about there. Next, we're going to add a few flowers. Also, I want to grab a piece of the chipboard. Let's grab the chipboard. Let's open that up more. I don't want to dump this out everywhere. I also don't want to tear my packaging um, because I want to be able to store this back in my packaging. So I'm just going to be a little careful and open this. And I can, you can see, look at all these really, really cool little pieces in here. See the little dress? It's just got really pretty pieces. A gorgeous little chandelier. Somebody's talking to me. We love how you ruffle the feathers. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> okay, what I want is there's a little floral corner in here. Right here. This is what I want. I want this piece right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear the back. And I'm going to remove the adhesive piece from the back, too. I'm just going to tear it down to its little bare back, its little naked back. It's going to show there. And I'm going to add a little, just a little glue to the inside area right here. And I'm going to be real careful not to unruffle my feathers. And push that right in behind my frame. So you can kind of see that it's right in behind my frame right there right where I want it now if this feels a little off it's like rocking just a little bit so I'm gonna grab one of my little cardboard corners here I don't like it to rock because I don't want anything to come unglued or come undone I'm gonna add one of my little corners just right up under so that that's not rocking back and forth so it's really secure just about like that so the next thing I'm going to add are my flowers. Grab all my packages of flowers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab these flowers right here that I've already I've already used a few off of. This is number five eight zero seven four two, and I'm going to grab I think this one. And possibly this one. My, I keep my mouse has fallen and my computer keeps going to sleep. So let's move our. I'm just going to kind of lay these flowers around and, and kind of position my colors. Since this one's a little bit different than the original, I'm going to use a maybe a few different colors. Next, I want to grab number 580674 these roses are so pretty look how pretty those are these are gorgeous too these are just a little bit bigger but these are my faves i love the shape of these i love the colors in this collection 
Um, so I want to grab this this pink. I think I'm going to add this pink here. And I want to add possibly this let's do this green one right about here. So I think that's what I'm going to do there. Lay these to the side. And lay these to the side. And then I want to grab this is number this is number 580711. I want to grab I think this brown one. And let's see. Let's add a smaller kind of multicolored one there and then this pink one. this and I may not use all of these I just want to grab a few out this is number 580728 everything's my favorite because these are some more of my faves um, I, I should just say Prima is my favorite that's I think that would work I'm gonna add that little peachy pinky colored one let's get another dark brown and another little dark pink it's just gonna give me something to kind of play with and move around uh, as far as my clustering goes. Let's add another neutral, kind of a pale pink. Just kind of use these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start gluing these down. I know kind of where I want them because it's where I started. Um, so I know I want to do one just beside this frame here, right at the edge of my chipboard, and I want to open this out. And then I want to use one of these pretty roses, the little bit smaller rose, to the inside of the frame here. And I just want to kind of fit these two together. So just kind of pull that up and kind of pinch that over the edge until these two kind of meet. You kind of see what I'm doing? I want those to kind of meet to cover up that frame. Gives it kind of a more natural look for me. Just add that and just kind of bend your petals down so that it's covered on the inside. And you can turn these and twist these however you need to do, um, or just open the actual edges out. But I'm I'm a little I'm a little anal when it comes to making the little pieces look a little more natural. So what I want to do is just right up at the top here, I want to add this larger rose. And again, I'm going to open it out and sort of push and tuck it in so that it gets a little bit more natural as if it's kind of grown up against this little frame. Kind of like so. I'll see that. I got all these in the way here so you can't tell. Kind of like that because I'm kind of going to do both sides. I want to balance this out. And you've got this little floral running over here to help you with your balance. The next thing I want to do is add this one kind of in and under there. Just want to kind of move my bouquet across seven minutes okay I'm I'm moving guys gonna get this right about here this is gonna be the pretty fast process now just kind of getting these in and positioned and I want to raise them up and tuck them under and add layers and create some depth with these I want to grab this other little light pink color with some glue and I'm going to take it under the lace. I'm going to actually raise the lace and take it just a little bit under the lace right there. Again, that helps helps show all of your layers when you do that. We've got a few more. I'm going to do this dark brown kind of over here. I'm lifting the lace again, adding it just under the lace. Let's do this little multicolored one kind of under, raise the little chipboard and place it under the chipboard so you see your little gold, your little gold piece kind of kind of stick out there. Let's do this kind of peachy pinky color here. I've got glue and everything all over me. I'm kind of seeing that. Add that right about there to kind of add to this little floral area where you put your um, where you put your actual little chipboard piece. And then just want to kind of position these around. Kind of one on this side. Kind of under your chipboard there as well. And then one on top. 
just fill in your little gaps and areas there with flowers. Take this darker pink color and add it kind of here just so a little bit of that peeks out. So you can kind of see that's where we're going with those. I need just a couple more to kind of put across the page here. Get these smaller ones. Just want to kind of take it out and across the page or across the, the cover I should say. Just kind of add that there and this other small one. Or kind of add it there so it just kind of kind of moves across your page kind of like that and roll these and the next thing I want to add is some little chipmore pieces and these are from the epiphany collection take those out of the packaging just kind of break the packaging a little bit take one of the keys one of the keys just in and behind here have that come out right about there pull our flower out just a little bit so we can see it and then we've got the little bow we want to use the little bow that comes with this set I like the idea of the bows I'm just kind of moving the bows around um, just because I kind of like the idea of the bow on the frame sort of wanted to use bows here so we want to add this bow right about here oh it's out of focus sorry about that okay yeah let me try bending the camera down just a little bit okay, how's that okay you can see we're adding our bow right about there put our key in here and we got our bow right about there with our flowers just all tucked in and around just about like that so that's what we're going to use from the, the epiphany wood next thing I'm going to do is grab my trim that I used on the outside of the spine and I'm just going to tie it in a bow any lace that you have will work to make a little bow. Just want to kind of work with it just a second to kind of pretty it up. And I know I'm not going to get to the inside of this one, guys, but I will post photos on my blog, um, delanas.blogspot.com, Delana, plural, Delana, with an S, dot blogspot.com and I will have photos there of the inside pages. Just want to kind of add this little bow here. Add a little glue. And I know I'm covering up the bow, but um, in real life when you see the actual project itself, you are able to actually see the bow under there. And what I'm going to do is just add a little glue just to the lace little leg there and just kind of stick it down. I kind of like to maneuver these little legs uh, and I call everything legs but the little extensions to the bow here. I kind of like to position them where I want them so I just add a little glue to them and just stick them right where I want them. So you can just open your bow and manipulate it here. If your bow's not stiff enough you can spray it with hairspray or something to stiffen up that fabric. But that that's about what I want right there. Last thing we're going to do to the cover is add our little title. And I use that by adding the Brad. And this is number 579302. And this Brad happens to say Bell of the Ball. This one right here says Bell of the Ball. So that's my title. And um, it could be a collection of... Um, family lady photos, it could be a prom, it could be some kind of a dance, it could just be um, girl photos in general. Just your belle of the ball, whoever is your belle of the ball. Or, since it's just such a small little area here, 
you could title this pretty much anything you wanted. So that's going to go right about there. It's going to take just a minute for the glue to catch and that stay, but you get the gist. I'm going to move my, my little flower back until that dries just a minute. So then all I did was go in with just a few more of these little pieces. And y'all know I just cut the legs off with the scissors and probably not a great idea with all my scissors, but I do it just because I can. They're really easy to cut off. So I'm just going to add a few. This little pink one I'm going to add right here to the little wooden key. Right about there. Just going to kind of throw these around. I'm going to grab my little saving crystal pieces and add a few of those. Just want to kind of tuck those in and around in places. And I've used quite a few of these. But um, you can use these to help move your color around or um, as flower centers or just lots of different things you can do with these. I'm just going to kind of tuck them in. I'm going to kind of make that the center of my little piece there. I'm just going to kind of tuck them in and around just, just for a little bit more. St well, I guess I didn't get my sticky with that one. Stick it back down. Be sure to get all of your... You can always use glue with these as well. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add a little glue to him because he's not going to stick. Add that one right about there. Okay, and you kind of get the gist of that. You can just kind of move those around kind of wherever you want them on your cover. You can get a closer look at mine later and uh, be able to see right where I've placed them if um, that's what you want to do. But you can see that's our cover. Uh, the inside, what I've done, I'm going to show you with the original album and uh, just sort of show you each page and how simple it is to decorate the inside but for now this is our actual cover and we'll kind of tuck that back up in there really well once it's dry but you can see this is this is our cover and it still feels kind of like it's out of focus there we go just give you a closer look like so Okay, now let me just show you the original, the original inside of the book. What I've done with the front cover is I've just covered it completely with a piece of paper. And then I just took scraps of paper and just cut. The entire collection matches so well that you can just use any of the papers and just layer them up at will. You've also got the 4x6 pad and the 3x4 pad. And they come with lots of different, um, lots of different colors and patterns, and uh, a few little word phrases and fussy cut pieces. And the back side of each is going to be a different color, so you can get lots of contrast colors from the back sides um, to add as well. You can use your dies and cut up label pieces or just whatever you want to do just for the inside but you can see I've added just a few layers of paper along the edge here I've added a little bit of Prima Trim uh, the really pretty little dress that comes in the um, chipboard I went to my stash added my own little row of pearls here's one of the little flowers a little flatter I've left things kind of only glued on one side so that I can tuck in photos I've used these little clips these clips are uh, number 564650, and that's those. And the butterfly clips are 564643, that's those. So you can see I've used those throughout as well. Uh, the little sad and crystal pieces I've used along with the little tags and tickets. There are a whole bag of tags and tickets, and I've got them totally messed up in here so you can't see but that's number five seven nine four nine four and that's the little round piece that you see there that's a little three by four that's just a little strip of paper uh, layered there you can pull them kind of off the edge and that's giving you this effect of all these little pieces showing here 
I've added some of uh, some more of Frank's trim, the larger rose trim here, um, along with more of the tags and tickets. I did a little fussy cutting. This is the wood, the actual wood um, that comes with the um, debutante collection, some more of the tickets. I've cut some little tags and pieces out of vellum and added those in as well, more chipboard. And you can see it's just filled. I've left the edges open so that photos can be tucked in. And you can see it's just layers of paper. I've done the lace again here on the edge. I just tucked it in with my scissors like I did on the front cover. I've used one of Prima's uh, doily dies. In fact, I did quite a few doily dies. Any doily die you've got, uh, and I've left it open at the top so my photo can um, kind of sit down inside there. More lace. I've added more of the flat lace along with some of the satin crystals. Just one of the little 4 by 6 or 3 by 4 cards tucked in, and that's left open there so photos can be tucked in or journaling or also gone and grabbed some of the wood buttons. Uh, more flowers you can see and I'm going to give you a picture of each page so you can see this is a vellum uh, piece here cut from a um, just a little label die with one of the satin crystals more of the wood from the wood icons uh, you can I mean it's just no 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 reason why all this just some of the words are showing um, some I've covered it all up a lot of distressing through here because remember the first layer is going to be distressing with the stain mask and I'm running it off the edge so that that shows and uh, using a lot of my own pearls um, that I picked up from Michaels and Hobby Lobby uh, again the top of this is open so photos can tuck down in just just lots of different things a few pages I've left that I can do later my back cover I've covered in paper and then this I've left open. Any of these pieces here that are left open, you just want to put some glue on three sides and leave the side that you need to tuck completely open and you can just tuck things in and um, you see our back cover is just sort of simply done so that it lays flat on a table. So that is it. I'm going to pan up and um, see y'all one more time. I hope this um, hope this all made sense to you. I felt like I kind of speed it up there at the end but uh, I will have pictures delanas.blogspot.com if you'll check that out in the next couple of days we have a terrible rainstorm here today so I probably won't be getting photos today but I'll get all this on my blog and ready for you um, and be sure and contact me if you have any questions check out Karen on Thursday y'all don't forget and uh, all of our uh, mixed media all of our mixed media I can't talk right now all of our uh, social media areas be sure to follow us uh, there and I will see y'all next month have a great day